Writing about experiential titles like Gone Home is difficult. While unpacking the creator's intent, it can be very tempting to overstate simple design choices. Please take my amateur journalism with a grain of salt, but also understand that it was written in full honesty. Hello friends, my name is Satchel Like a Bag Drakes, and welcome to Anti-Semantics, a show where we will be concisely looking at select points from the game at hand. This time, it's Gone Home. Gone Home is a first-person experience title from a Portland-based team of four known as the Fulbright Company. It's 1995. Your name is Caitlin Greenbrier, and you're a 20-year-old gal who has just returned from a year-long trip abroad in Europe to an empty house. You find out that your parents are gone, and that your sister has run away, insisting you don't look for her. This sets the premise. With no means of transportation, and the phone lines cut out from a severe thunderstorm, you're implicitly tasked with finding out what has happened in your absence. There's a reason why the official trailer for Gone Home doesn't tell much. The premise of this title is really hinged upon the player unfolding the narrative for themselves. Themselves. So rather than potentially spoiling anything for anybody, I wanted to address some of the overarching themes and address any knee-jerk criticism. The Greenbrier House is essentially a library of social and cultural 90s memorabilia, specifically pertaining to that cable-branded American nuclear family. For people from the States, think Fox Family Channel. Not one stone of the era is left unturned, from dry colonial interior design, to radical McGraw-Hill book cover design, to grunge and post-punk mixtapes in the soundtrack, and the mark of the era doesn't stop there. Without spoiling too much, the ideologies of adolescent freedom and independence also ring in a similar tone. The fiction easily addresses relational issues and coming-of-age narrative with the timbre of my so-called life. Gone Home is about exploration, and it's encouraged in a very non-intrusive way. It doesn't lean on the cliches of detective gumshoe mysteries or hardy boy clues like you might find in Fatal Frame. There are no automated chimes or scooby-doo bumps in the attic. There's ambience, static, memorable cassette tapes, special compartments, and an invitation to inspect a once-inhabited estate. On one hand, this house is an open letter that reads itself to you as you explore it. On the other hand, you do more than simply collect artifacts that add to a knowledge meter. Instead, you're invited to pick up, rotate, and analyze its contents for yourself. Forget key items. Nothing glistens like it might in Resident Evil or Bioshock because no item is more or less key than anything else. There are items pivotal for progression, but focusing on progression alone can actually hinder your experience. Personal progression and you know the reward for actually finishing this thing are found in the minuscule. In some ways, I'd say Bioshock is slightly more forgiving, because though wandering Columbia or Rapture can add to the experience, the story will still unfold for you if you mechanically shoot your way to the end. It's a bit different here. There's a place for the mundane, for the boring, everyday environment. And it plays a greater part in the ending than you'd guess. Gone Home deals with controversial issues without yelling or waving a picket sign. It has other goals. It makes great use of player agency, which is frankly one of the most powerful and distinguishing tools that the interactive medium has that other mediums like film don't. Storage media with greater capacities allowed game designers the option of embedding encoded video into their titles. We saw in-engine cinematics as well. This did something to storytelling. It allowed game designers to lean on an already established art of film to create large and familiar experiences. With the right budget, you could have a player feel like a pivotal part of a blockbuster experience. But it was a false sale. Unfortunately, having movies build the story leaves the player with about as much responsibility as a theme park ride might. The spine of games isn't the spine of film, and games can tell stories much differently than movies do if you let them. The choices these older games presented were more like rhetorical questions. Playable movies seem more and more like stepping stones for something much greater. This leads us to why Gone Home is a memorable example of effective storytelling. 
As I mentioned earlier, Gone Home makes great use of player agency. Having player agency is having the capacity to make meaningful decisions within a game world. Now, many might say that every game has player agency then, because really, you're always making decisions in a game. But that's not always the case. Um, in many ways, a game can be designed to strip away player agency completely. If a game consists of stages, instead of creating a red pill or a blue pill for a player to choose, the developer may create pill number one to swallow before pill number two. Or, if multiple pills are offered, rather than having each pill yield a unique result, they could all be rigged to yield the same initial event for the sake of a scripted progression. It's like as if the Mega Man X level progression looked more like a Sonic 2 level progression. You don't pick your poison, so therefore you're not a participant in a two-way conversation. What made player agency so great for Gone Home was the opportunity to unpack a story. And even though the climax and the anticlimax couldn't be altered, you had a chance to feel what the subject felt while still being yourself. You're Caitlyn, the distant, neutral sister. Your job is to discover, assess, and spectate on your own accord completely. Even in the heat of controversy, your voice is your voice, and this is what made Gone Home special. Bioshock Infinite shared an encouragement of casual exploration and flirted with controversial topics, but your agency was still at the will of who you were playing. Booker DeWitt decided my stance on Columbia's hyper-supremacist values. Whether you actually wanted Elizabeth to live freely in Paris didn't actually matter for the first first two acts of the game. DeWitt's true intent was kept a complete mystery from the player up until then. In Gone Home, Caitlyn grants us more freedom to identify with her. The very fact that her trip abroad separated her from pivotal family events helps us feel like we're learning with her. To be fair, Gone Home has locked doors. You're somewhat guided in a particular direction, but with two floors at one's disposal and no required order of discovery for what's available, there's still quite a bit of undistracted freedom. I heard about Gone Home on the internet. Now, the people who were talking about it grouped it into a witty category they refer to as games that aren't games. Now, I personally find this title to be pretty funny, and though arguing the reasoning behind labeling titles like Gone Home in this way isn't a hill I'm really willing to die on, I do question how helpful and informed it is to refer to first person experiences like this in that manner. Saying that Gone Home isn't a game because it doesn't have this, or this, is at least worth a conversation. But to address it bluntly, it reminds me of a group of elderly, Mozart-enthused, classically trained music enthusiasts, stating that Iron Maiden isn't music simply because it doesn't align with what they knew to be music in their heyday. Iron Maiden is music, objectively qualified and awesome music. It's also noise to my grandparents. And I think in attempting to broadly label what Gone Home, The Stanley Parable, and similar games are, we lose sight of just how much space there is on the stage of gaming to begin with. It's like calling Explosions in the Sky a lesser band because they don't have a vocalist, stating that they're not making real songs because we grew up on rock bands with singers. I might be getting ahead of myself, but I think you get the point. The point is this. Have we allowed our own formalism to affect our understanding of what a game is or could be? How relative are we willing to admit our perspective is? In life. How relative are we willing to admit our perspective? <laughs> Regardless, I'm not sure if having a flag staked in the early years of video gaming grants me the right to declare whether Gone Home is a whole game, a third of a game, or a non-game. What makes games not film, or music, or literature is its interactive experience and player agency, and I had those two distinguishing things in Gone Home in an unmatched capacity. Ryan Green, an exceptional designer and developer for the game That Dragon Cancer stated, I believe that games and technology have evolved far enough to gain the potential to receive that eternal spark, that light that gives them the ability to break free from their evolutionary, formalist fetters and receive grace. Grace is the substance that formalism cannot observe. Regarding the idea of grace, game designer Jonas Kiradzes had this to say, That, in fact, is its point. Grace is when the two sides of the equation don't match, but the thing works anyway. Grace is the absurd yet wonderful fact that sometimes you get more than you put in. And what did I myself get out of Gone Home? Regarding seeing games as something creative and personal, respected and academic games thinker Raf Koster said, 
I would rate better understanding of another human and the challenge of empathy as bare minimum requirements for something reaching for art. The bare minimum of Gone Home was human empathy. It was a two-way conversation between the developer and myself through means of interactivity. Good game.